What's up guys? Hope you are doing good. I've been getting this question a lot that why am I going for the incarnate fusion? Ooh. Brother, ooh. what's that? What's that brother? People are very puzzled that I'm pretty end game player. Why do I care about it? And I wanted to make a video <laughs> to talk about it in detail. But I'm gonna give you a heads up that I'm doing the fusion, but I'm not actually going for it. But I wanna get the fragments for mod. If we quickly take a look at the kits, like the TLDR version, why nobody thinks this champion is um, worth going for. By nobody, I mean like the more hardcore players that have played the game for years. It's very average champion, and there's actually multiple similar ones to this. I mean, I got some. A1, he does some provokes, then he does like some shields and like ally protection and strengthening for the team. Pretty decent utility, but what everybody can see or the people that have played the game a lot are and are at end game. This champion, even though it kind of seems interesting that it has some, it's basically like a new partner for Arbiter, which is a super cool thing, but in end game, generally. You don't care about the champion unless it's the it does something new that nobody else does or it's the best at one thing or one of the best at some really important thing that you want to do something that is basically op and like <laughs> lets you speed run content or it's very strong on hydra or arena this champion is not gonna be it that's very apparent for everybody and the player praise is pretty not anonymous, they're unanimous, <laughs> not anonymous, unanimous about the fact that, sorry for being <laughs> my broken English. Anyway, so the player base is pretty unanimous that it's not that good champion. And that's why you see a lot of videos where people are telling you to not get it. And still quite many newer players kind of see this champion as very good. And if you think it will help you in faction wars or curse city or Doom Tower or whatever, you should totally go for this champion. And generally, I recommend going for every fusion, even if you are dead set that you will never use it. Primarily because um, you will still, I mean, there's a good chance that at some point we will have new champions in Token Trader. I think actually Plarium has said it, but I think they said it like two years ago. So we, we will see about that. But that's, that's a possibility, and then of course, you might not have your faction guardians completed. I mean, I have played the game for 5 years, I'm nowhere close to completed. I don't know if I could have this completed, even if I played another 5 years. W who knows, it's gonna come down to RNG. But it's actually pretty significant to get the faction guardians maxed. And as you can see, for instance, on high elves, I'm 6 out of 10, so I would need two more dupes and the last one is speed which obviously is going to be great with arbiter great for any faction but especially when there's a speed booster or some kind of setup champion in that faction if i didn't go for the champion for the mod fragments which i'm gonna talk about in a second i would still do it just to get just to get um get the potential that i only need one more copy and then i might get the faction Guardian upgrade. That's why I would do it as most people, but fusions can be insanely hard. Even when I get the CC perks, it's still insanely hard for me, which I know some people people are not gonna be happy when I say that, but what I mean to say is that even for me it's hard and I know that it's hard for other people as well. And sometimes you might just want to skip a fusion, you don't have enough bruise or gems or whatever. That totally makes sense. And in that case, you could skip it. I mean, I have skipped several fusions. Not really skipped. I think I have skipped maybe like one fusion, but I think it was like um, two years ago in December, I skipped whatever was the December fusion. Not Pyxnil. I'm pretty sure it was some kind of freeze champion. No, it was Tatura. Yeah, I skipped Tatura fusion because... 
Um, it was December, I was busy with holidays and I was low on resources. I knew I wouldn't be able to do it, so I think this is the only one that I skipped intentionally. But there's been actually multiple other ones that I didn't skip intentionally, but I just ran out of resources or I forgot there's like one event that I wasn't able to do. And that's why <laughs> that's why I was a few fragments short or whatever. And that's why I'm pretty close to Maud. I mean, not like it's still actually kind of far away, but this is after me playing five years and missing out on multiple fusions. Granted that I think fragments fragment fusions only only came into the game maybe like two years after the release. We didn't have those at the start. I think Creela Witch Arm was probably the first fragment event, but uh, don't quote me on that one. Just out of top of my memory, but I'm actually super excited about getting mod, and I've talked about this to many people, and everybody's kind of bustled and <laughs> think I'm like trolling or trying to be like um, different on purpose just to be cool or whatever. And obviously, I don't have mod, and I can't play on this server. N not that you could really test this properly on this server anyway, but I think mod is actually going to be pretty good. On live arena. If I get it sometime soon, I will definitely use it in classic arena as well. But I think mod actually has very significant role, right, at least right now, unless we get somebody better for it. But I think she would be super good for almost anybody in live arena. And for that reason, even if it's a really crappy fusion and you don't care about the faction guardians, I will still go for the fragments at least as much as possible to get the mod and l let's talk about why so i'm like 81 fragments so far and i think i can get like 16 16 chests if i get like 400 fragments on epics but i think i can get maybe 450 or something like that there's a like kind of a coin flip that i might get enough um, fragments from this fusion or I might be couple short. It kind of comes down to RNG. I hope I get it because I really want to use it in live arena and make content about it because obviously <laughs> I will be able to sell more better after I get to test it and maybe I will get disappointed about her and it, it will be better to know but I don't think I will be disappointed and okay finally we got to the part <laughs> on the video that we're gonna talk about mine. Why, why would you want to get mod? So, again, I kind of need to go through the meta a little bit, but if I just quickly explain, actually, do I need to, do I need to pull, okay, we're not pulling the, <laughs> some people are kind of memeing that on videos I always pull the last week's top 30 platinum marina. Anyway, let's not even look at that, let's just look some, um, not the classic arena leader part, but just some live arena battles that I've had recently, these are good examples. Yeah, we, we have stuff like, you know, lots of debuff champions, that's my point. There's a lot of speed teams, people often use champions like uh, Grixia, Shu, Chen, that kind of stuff, Armands, even though you might not see that much of them here right now, because I I often ban those and it kind of comes down to RNG who you meet. And of course, I'm at like 5.4k points, I'm not at 10,000 points, so... I don't even meet all of the best accounts all the time. But many of the meta champions, like let's say that the best champion in the game right now is for sure Galatir. I don't think you will hardly find any, I mean, I'm sure you can find like one person, but basically nobody is disagreeing that Galatir is the best champion in the game. There is very strong unanim, 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 unanimity, anyway. There's, people agree that Galatir is super OP and it's for multiple reasons. I mean, he has everything. He He's a primal champion, so he's basically like two champions in one and both of those champions are very strong. He's a reviver with insane base stats. He has passives that mitigate his damage and make sure that he can't get one shot. He has both turn meter boost and decrease on his kit. He has heal, buff strip, damage reduction from whale, everything else, but on the second form is the true true terror that everybody hates about him. 
He has one kill, one skill with buff strip, AOE buff strip, and block active skills, which is basically a lockout on debuff form. And then on the other skill, he also has a stun. So basically, you can't do anything if you're against Galatir, if you get unlucky. I mean, maybe you can proc Polymorph, maybe he's not able to buff strip your stone skin. But he might just do that, and then you get locked out, and on the next turn, you get stunned as well, and you basically can't do any anything. And Star Sage isn't the only one, there's lots of other very strong CC champions that are super popular in the meta. One more free-to-play one would of course be Lady Mikage, that is almost picked in every single fight. Where do we have mod? Okay, so, okay, now we come down to... I'm not gonna go like through every single champion in the meta, I've done it on many videos, but you get the point, there's a lot of popular meta champions with debuffs, even with Polymorph being a thing, it's still very big issue. And Mord is a reviver, which there is other revivers, or there's pretty tough competition with champions like Sifi, Angora and Galatir for instance, being in the meta, those probably would be consider the top three revivers but Mord basically has a, has the Doom Priest passive that every time he takes a turn removes one random debuff from all allies at the start of this champion's turn places a 15% continuous heal buff on the ally with lowest HP for one turn at the end of this champion's turn so not only is he useful or she I'm sorry <laughs> I guess it's a she. Not only is she useful, if let's say Lady Mikake can stun your team or Galatir locks your team out or stuns your team, but she can remove that with your passive. So let's say that she's the fastest champion in the team and the enemy Mikake goes first. She stu stuns your team, then Maud goes and nobody's stunned anymore. On top of that, you get heal on your lowest HP champion. And this is on a passive, so she will do this every single turn. This is super good. This alone is in, in, insanely good, but obviously if she just had that, it wouldn't be enough. It's not like you see people using Doom Priest or Tuhanarak, but actually all of her skills are insanely useful, even though people kind of glance through her kit and don't see it as super impressive. So then on the A3, and like I said, all of them are good, but the fact that she has that passive, which counters the CC meta, and she also does revive on her A3, meaning that she does two very crucial roles on one setup, she counters the debuffs or CC, and she has the revive in the team. Usually you want to have at least one reviver in your team, very rarely people don't pick any revivers. The issue with that is that um, Let's say that you don't pick any revivers at all, then the enemy is gonna ban... They could either ban one of your nukers, just so that you don't have any damage, and then count the other one, or they will counter your whatever speed champion with CC that you have, and as long as they build a very tanky team or CC or something like that, it can be a very safe battle for them. That's why oftentimes going with any reviver at all is not a good choice, it's just kind of easy to counter. And that's why usually people go with one reviver. It might even be with two or three, consider that, considering that we have champions like Galatir and Lazarus, or Siegfund, who reviver isn't really even their main role, but they do also have revive. So they might easily pick all of those champions or multiple of those, and then also, let's say, Sifi or Ankara. Often people will pick multiple revivers, and Basically, you will not see anybody pick any revivers at all, unless very rarely. Actually, I do that sometimes, and that's when they pick all of my revivers usually, and I have no choice. But she does a revive, and this is actually, I would say, a lot better than Dutch's revive. I wouldn't overlook this revive skill at all. It revives people at 50% HP, which is whatever. Ideally, it would be like anything more than 50%, th that could be very useful sometimes, L let's say 60%, but it's also at 50% turn meter, which is a huge deal, because often if you revive your champions without any turn meter, 
even, even with 50, but especially without any turn meter, chances are that they are just gonna die before they get any turns. But on top of that, she also gives you attack or defense buff depending which stat is higher on your champions in the team. But basically it's gonna be of course defense buff most of the time because all of your of course defense scaling nukers but all of your supports or HP scaling champions basically anyone that isn't built with attack they are gonna be revived with defense buff and defense buff is actually very huge deal in arena and right now in the meta where people avoid shields with white king narsis being a thing and getting double damage and ignoring your shields uh, ignoring your shields <laughs> The defense buff is still works against that and it will actually Narciss is not gonna probably one shot your team after you pull out the revive at least not your supports that are built with some bilk bilk bulk i mean bulk <laughs> when they are built built a little bit bulky and they get defense buff even at 50 percent hp white king Narciss is not gonna one shot them if you don't have like shield or strengthen so those are very good combination, they fit the meta very much, they might not seem like the most OP thing in the game when you think about it in the vacuum, but when you put it in the context of live arena meta, this is super powerful and I'm planning to use it in classic arena as well, but I think especially in the current live arena meta, it's gonna be great. Then we will get to the A2 and I think this skill is actually very good as well. It's, <laughs> I think everything about her is underrated. All of her skills serve a good purpose that is relevant in PvP. Often I, I even see people thinking, thinking about her as Hydra champion or something, and nobody is really thinking about the opportunities that you get for PvP. So the A2 does like 20% max HP heal on your team and increases the duration of buffs. I guess this is probably why people think about her for Hydra a lot. No, not a lot, but when people talk about Maur, they talk about Hydra. This is all very... Um, can be re very, very relevant in PvP. It might increase the duration of your immunity buff or something else. And not only does she do revive, but she does have two different heals on her kit, both with the A2 and passive. Might not be as strong as Sifi heals, but it's actually gonna add up and it's very nice to have the full package that you have revive and heals on one champion, meaning that she kind of has self sustain as well. But this skill isn't just offensive, it also has basically the same thing that Marius does, to maybe kind of lesser degree, that decreases the duration of all enemy buffs by two turns, and it's not a buff trip, so this skill will not get you polymorphed. Now, they will still have 50% chance to resist when they have stone skin up, but let's say that the mod is the first champion in your team that goes, or let's let's say the enemy enemy Mikage or Galatir is the first champion that goes, they will stun your team. Then you have a mod built fast, faster than the enemy nukers. Mod is gonna take turn, nobody in your team is locked out or stunned anymore, and then you can do this skill, but it kind of depends on the situation, but oftentimes you're probably gonna open with this skill. And with this skill, you have 50% chance to remove enemy stone skin and like bolster or shield or that kind of stuff. But let's say that you basically counter the Galatir lockout with her passive, and then you bust trip the enemy nukers, and then your own nukers can kill the enemy nukers that were in stone skin. Let's say something like Ronda or Lazarus that are very powerful and if they go first, they're gonna screw your go second team. But then you can just kill them, and this is not consistent. The Marius A2 is a lot more when it's a triple hitter. But this does decrease the duration by two turns, and it is still AoE, so and it's on top of all of the other things that she does. So oftentimes this will remove the enemy stone skin. It might remove their attack buffs or defense buffs, make them do less damage or help your team do more damage, but that's actually insanely powerful utility on this skill and I will not uh, overlook it at all. And finally we even get to the A1. This is not the highlight of the champion, 
but I would say it's one of the better A1s, though it kind of... Um, both, I actually don't like the fact that she does decrease attack buff, because you might get polymorphed on her, but chances are that you're not going to build her with any accuracy anyway, or you can decide if you want to, and you can decide who you attack with the A1, so I don't think it's going to be negative. But she does decrease attack on one champion with 70% chance, so it's not very consistent, but maybe sometimes you can get attack debuff on Wukong or something, and then he can do a powerful A2 and you're very safe. It can be very useful. But also, at 100% chance, it's gonna give increased attack buff on your champion with highest attack. And let's say that you get like counter attacks or you're just locked out and you have to do A1, you can basically get 100% uptime on attack buff on your nuker, or you can decide if you need the buff. Like, let's say that you have your other skills out of cooldown, but you really just want to get the attack buff on your nuker, you can basically get it whenever you need to have it. So that's actually very powerful utility. We're kind of moving a little bit away from attack nukers. There's actually many of the meta champions right now, the nukers, are not even attack nukers. In the past, it was only attack nukers and defense nukers never really got any use ever, never mind HP ones. But right now, you see all of them, some of the most meta ones like, let's say Harim or Galatir and Taras and maybe even Gizmog, none of those are attack scaling nukers, so you will meet those, but there's still stuff like um, Lazarus, I guess Lazarus does self attack buff actually, I guess he doesn't really need it, but there's many, many nukers that might still want to get the attack buff, and oftentimes you might not... Um, you might not have it on your team. Maybe you're gonna pick Sifi, or maybe the enemy team pick Dutchess or whatever. Maybe maybe there's just no way for you to get the attack buff, or you need you need something more important. Like let's say that you need something to counter the Galatir um, CC, and the champions that you're thinking are maybe using um, maybe Angora. Angora could do a cleanse, and it could remove the stuns on on her passive, but she couldn't She couldn't remove the lockout, by the way. Maud is gonna remove the lockout, even if she gets locked out, so it's gonna be way better for that than Angora, and you could also do the attack buff. I may be trying to sell the champion a little bit here, but I literally haven't seen anybody <laughs> speaking about this champion and be excited about it. I saw a couple people speculating about using maybe Maud on Hydra, but literally nobody. I'm Probably somebody did talk about it, but I tried to look for it. I didn't see anybody talking about Mart for Arena. And I think she's actually gonna be super good there. I might even make another video. I think you could make a very powerful team with Falmond actually, now that you might get Mart. People are kind of um, sleeping on Falmond as well, but he does have the passive that your team is immune to lockout effects completely. But you need to run a full team of Sacred Order, which can be kind of hard to do. But I think there's actually some setups you could do with this, and Mord will be a big part of them, because not only is she going to be a Reviver, which you kind of needed a good one on Sacred Order, not like you would use Guard Seeker or Cardinal in Platinum Arena, but you could get revive with mod, and you could also get the attack buff, for instance. So I think it you could really make a Falmon team later. I'm kind of thinking that <laughs> I might actually pull for Falmon Dever event whenever we get the next one, because I kind of want to see what I could do with that. But I think that's gonna be topic for another video. I hope I maybe change somebody's mind and you're gonna consider this and maybe Go for the fragments, if you otherwise weren't, and trying to prepare for mod. Obviously, mod is incredibly long grind to get, and that's why people kind of haven't thought about her too much, because barely anybody has it. But if you can slowly grind to it, I would definitely go for it, and obviously I don't have her yet. I'm trying to get her as soon as possible. When I get her, I will definitely make videos about her, and if it works out well, which 
I'm pretty sure it will, kind of how I just talked about that she's very good pick against many of the common meta champions, but I think after I get her and I make videos about her, people, some people will definitely change her mind about her and also go for her. But here's kind of the heads up that maybe you were skipping this fusion because it didn't seem worth doing and you were kind of lazy and wanted to <laughs> wanted to don't, not do the events, but even if you missed out on some of the events, you could still do some of them and get those Slixus fragments and get the mod. Anyway, that's pretty much all I had to say. <laughs> say on this video, let's not make it any longer than this. I'll do a super long stream on Friday, like I've done in the last couple of weeks, so if you want if you want to ask any questions, if you want to hang out, make sure to <laughs> check up on my Friday streams. I do streams on Mondays and Fridays now. It's a new thing. I never streamed before and people were always asking do I stream on Twitch or where I do it. But it's a thing now. Anyway, that's enough for shilling. Thanks a lot for watching the video and see ya.